organisations falling within the scope of the Blue Card system are required to develop and implement child and youth risk management strategies which address eight minimum requirements. This video will guide you through the third of the minimum requirements, which is the requirement to have written procedures for recruiting, selecting, training and managing staff and volunteers. Each of these practices should be considered separately in order to minimise risks at each stage of the employment process. It may be useful to group the processes into pre-appointment and post-appointment. You may be wondering, why do we need to have these types of procedures? Well, working with children checks are most effective when supplemented by child-focused recruitment policies within the organisation itself. As discussed in the introductory video, the Blue Card system is made up of three elements. It is important to recognise that the initial Blue Card screening assesses a person's eligibility to work with children. It is up to you, the organisations, to have proper policies and procedures in place to effectively determine a person's suitability for the role. Effective recruitment, selection, training and management strategies will deter and identify applicants that are not suitable for your organisation, assist you to find the people that are qualified and who will contribute to facilitating a safe and supportive environment for children, Ensure that staff receive adequate and appropriate training to deliver child-related services in a safe and productive way. And ensure that any issues with staff performance or conduct are identified early and actioned appropriately. You may be wondering, where do we start? What sort of things should be included? Every organisation is different. Your procedures for recruitment, selection, training and management should be tailored to your organisation. We will first discuss the strategies that should be utilised before you employ or engage the person, the pre-appointment processes. The goal of these processes is to identify and recruit someone who has the skills and attributes to fulfil the role requirements. There are several strategies which you could implement to assist in achieving this goal. Let's start with position descriptions. For every role type in your organisation, you should have a clear position description, which can be used for internal and advertising purposes, which clearly outlines the duties, skills, experience, qualifications, and responsibilities required of the role. You should also clearly state the blue card screening requirements for the role you are advertising. Another tool you can adopt is the use of selection criteria. You should frame selection criteria to assess commitment, understandings, attributes, attitudes and values required of the position, particularly as they relate to children. A good way to do this is to list the duties and tasks required of the job in one column. And then in the next column, list the skills and attributes which are required to achieve these tasks. Interviews will be an essential tool of your pre-appointment strategy. An effective interview process will assist you in determining whether a person shares your organisation's values and is committed to the development and well-being of children. You should structure interviews for prospective staff by clearly defining how they will be conducted by formulating the types of questions to be answered. Some examples might be something like this organisation is committed to ensuring that the behaviour of all paid employees and volunteers towards children and young people is appropriate. Please provide examples of what you would deem to be appropriate and inappropriate behaviour management techniques. Can you describe how you would encourage a child or young person to participate in group activities? Scenario-based questions tend to provide great insight into a person's work style and experience. For example, you could ask something like, if a young person you were working with suddenly got angry, swore loudly and walked off, what would you do? What would you do if you were about to leave for the day and you saw a child alone in the car park? 
You said earlier that you wouldn't tolerate inappropriate conduct towards children. What would you do if you overheard another staff member swearing at a child? Reference checks can also be a vital part of any selection process. You should complete the reference checks with the most recent employer to verify the identity of the prospective employee, the accuracy of the details of previous employment, and the suitability of the individual to work with children and young people. If the reference is written, contact the referee to confirm authenticity. Useful questions which you may ask might be, have you directly supervised the person and observed their work? Would you employ the person again? Do you have any concerns about the person working directly with children? Once you have employed or engaged a person to work with your organisation, you should continue to monitor their performance by implementing appropriate post-appointment training and management strategies, especially when the person is new and unfamiliar to the organisation. Again, there are several strategies you can implement to assist. Let's look at induction programs first. Your organisation should provide a detailed induction process for paid employees and volunteers so that all are aware of the policies, procedures and practices of your organisation. A key component of your induction should be training regarding your child and youth risk management strategy. A probation period can allow you to assess the performance of a new employee and their suitability before permanently confirming their employment. During the probation period, you should meet the new employee to set goals, identify training needs specifically in relation to risk management practices, and identify and provide any additional support to the new employee to ensure success in the new role. Your organisation should have ongoing training and professional development strategies in place to support staff and volunteers. Mechanisms to support this may be undertaking an assessment of the specific risks and subsequent training needs which are relevant to your service environment, maintaining a calendar of what training is on offer in a place which can be easily accessed by all staff and volunteers, clearly identifying mandatory training to all staff and specifying how frequently it should occur, and maintaining a register of who has completed what training. Your organisation should also consider what management procedures will be used. For example, performance appraisals, complaints management, performance management, including processes for addressing issues relating to performance which may impact on the safety or well-being of children, disciplinary procedures and exit interviews or questionnaires. To further assist you in developing and implementing effective child and youth risk management strategies, a toolkit which is available on the risk management page of the Blue Card Services website has been developed to provide information and guidance on the eight minimum requirements. Remember, safe service environments don't just happen, they require ongoing planning, commitment and maintenance. Thank you for taking the time to learn about this requirement of child and youth risk management strategies. We hope you found this video useful and we encourage you to watch the remaining videos on offer from the Blue Card Services Learning Portal.